our water. I've got a cup of tea. I've got our water. I've got, got, got questions. Got tea. We're ready. Ready. Right. First of all, who are you? I am. Oh, I'm slipping. That's where I am. That's who I am. <laughs> um, I'm Brian Drubshaw. I run Journeyman Handcrafts, which is a uh, outdoor bushcraft uh, leather and canvas manufacturing company. Excellent. And thank you for having me here today. Um, You're I think more than it, welcome. That's all right. Uh, we're going to kind of just discuss basically just yourself, yeah. kind of how the business has grown and, and maybe end with sort of advice if there's anyone else who wants to do something similar. Absolutely. Basically. Yeah. Thanks for coming. All right. Well, right. so first question is, why did you get into um, making bushcraft bags? Uh, so bushcraft was a passion of mine um, and just the outdoors in general. I got quite heavily into that. Um, and then I took a took a specific fancy to the old school aesthetic of the way things were done. So by that, what I mean is um, the wax canvas, the leather, rather than the modern materials like nylon, etc. Um, fell in love with that aesthetic, wanted to pursue my outdoor um, hobbies within that aesthetic and trying to get hold of those types of items was quite hard in this country and um, the only place you could get them was America obviously export etc it's quite expensive to get those kind of items in so I just started having a go making things myself started with small things and gradually over the years just took on bigger and bigger projects and here we are we're not finished yet but yeah we just keep getting bigger with the things we make yeah what is it about being outdoors that inspires you? Lots of things. Freedom, adventure. I'm quite a curious person. I like to know why things are the way they are and how things work, etc. So as I started to adventure outdoors, everything I look everything that I looked at raised a question. And that just made me then research and find books and Google and that is probably the biggest reason, curiosity more than anything, and, and questions about the world, yeah. Oh, wicked. Um, um, so what, when you first started out, what kind of challenges did you face? When I first started, I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. <laughs> so that was the biggest challenge, kind of trying to learn. Um, having no, necessarily not having a, a teacher, um, so a lot of YouTube, etc. That would have been the hardest thing. Um, is that the question? Yeah, like challenges that you yeah, started out. So what about, you so you mentioned about when you first started, I'm guessing that, taking that passion, um, what was the reason that you, what was the key thing that made you want to then go from ha it being a hobby, and, you know, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. things just for fun, to actually it being a business? Was there kind of a key driver in that? Um, one, I really enjoyed doing it, but obviously, as they say, don't do your hobby as a job because you'll start to hate it. That hasn't happened yet, so we'll see. But um... I disagree with that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't. No, I, I, my advice would be do your hobby. Yeah, oh, do absolutely. I thing. totally agree. Otherwise, you'll hate your job. Yeah, 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 I absolutely agree. So I love doing it. I really enjoy doing it. Um, and then I all, at the same time of doing my job, I wasn't necessarily enjoying the, the corporate lifestyle. Um, and I, I could see myself doing something for me. Um, and that was the driving force behind taking it from a hobby and turning it into a, a full-time job, I guess. And you, um, obviously we were chatting before, you mentioned that you had a completely different job. What yeah, was it that yeah. you did before? So before I, I took on doing this full-time, um, I was a, a grounds maintenance and landscaper. So it was a, it was a, it was a, for a variety of jobs. Um, and what so, was that like going from that to, you know, I'm guessing that there were things like you had somewhat security with that job and, you know, your general kind of things that yeah. people want and so I guess that it's, kind of leap. Yeah, so I guess it's like with, with any job, when you have a salary, you have that security, you know what's coming in at the end of the, every month, etc. Um, so there's a massive change there and, you know, a lot of worry there um, going from having that money and then all of a sudden not knowing if that money is going to be there. Um, so a massive change, but I really wanted it. I wanted to have that that break away from the corporate lifestyle and also the freedom to, to, to do as I please in a way. Like, yes, there's still orders to be done, but um, I have the freedom to, to, to do what I want each day. Um, 
as long as we still hit the deadline by the end of the week. So it's, I keep mentioning it, but freedom is a big thing for me. Yeah, being able to do what you want when you want and etc. Yeah. Right. So what have been like the best and worst things about the business as it's grown then? Um. And maybe especially how it's getting into how where we are now, where obviously you're bringing more people in. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's not just, um, like you said, that hobby of you in the shed. It's kind of a bit more of a, you know, it's a fully fledged business with employees. Yeah, so I, I start with the worst thing. The worst thing comes off the back of having more employees is needing to be organised. Um, when it was just me, I could do as I please, I had full control of what I was doing, I didn't have to worry about anyone else. But now there's more people involved, which I absolutely love, I love having a team behind me, but there's definitely an element of organisation which I never had before, and I need to be on top of it. I can't just please myself and just sew away and do whatever I want to do, I need to be thinking about five other things that other people are doing. Uh, which is absolutely brilliant, it's just a learning curve and just getting used to it. Um, the best thing is, is again, freedom, is being, ha being able to do those things. If I want to have an extra long, have an extra long lunch break um, one day because the sun's shining, I can. If I want to go for a bike ride in the afternoon, I can. I still make up the time. I just work later into the evening, but I can I can work with the weather and I can enjoy the outdoors. It came from a passion of being outdoors um, and not necessarily being able to do that as much in a corporate job. Yeah. Excellent. And you can have strangers over to take up your Tuesday exactly. and. Uh, Ask us daft questions. It's all good fun. So, um, <clears throat> if you could briefly describe for me, how has the business changed since you started? How, how in what how has it developed, and in what ways? So, I started as a leather worker. I'd never touched a sewing machine. I'd never touched uh, a piece of canvas. Started doing leather work for people. Um, well, started doing it for myself. People liked it. People then started asking me to make things for them. I then happened to come across an old hand crank Singer sewing machine in my nan's loft. I got it out. I then took it to a, a camp with me for some reason. Um, there was a lady there who had a Land Rover. She put it in the back of a Land Rover. She got it working for me and we sat in the back of a Land Rover stitching my first thing. <laughs> She's a bit unique. Um, and then from there I grabbed myself some wax canvas and started to give it a go and started to knock out very, very ugly little pouches. And um, that's how it started. Yeah. What was the question? How has it developed? How has it developed? So since then? Yeah. So moving on from that, we've got bigger sewing machines, which was a key thing because with that, with the, with a little hand crank, you can only sew so much. So I got myself the same machine but electric. We ran that into the ground in about two years. It died on me one, one Christmas when we had the most orders we've ever had in a Christmas. The sewing machine went down. A good friend of mine happened to have another machine so I ran all the way to his house to pick it up and borrow a machine to get us through that Christmas. Um, and then and the big thing was to get the industrial sewing machine that we now have um, we had someone come to me saying, I want a rucksack. Have you ever made a rucksack? My answer was no. He said, would you be up for it? I said, yes. Um, and he wanted to basically sell these rucksacks. So he wanted me to make them, he was gonna sell them. And that was the catalyst to actually buying our first big industrial sewing machine. And then it developed from there. And then more sewing machines, more people, more kit, and on it goes and yeah. <laughs> and on it goes and Someone goes, goes next door. That's fine. We'll wait Sorry. till uh, your next door neighbour goes. That's fine. <laughs> Bye, Kelly. What was I saying? Journeyman, which is the company, was doing was doing brilliantly. And then the next big catalyst that we got was um, we got our first big wholesale order coming, and that was when I really took a step back and went, "Wow, this could actually become something." Um, and at that point, I still hadn't gone full time. So we took on our first big, consistent wholesale order. Um, Journeyman was obviously still going on. Um, and we then took on more people to accommodate that wholesale order. And then one day, it, we hit the point where I was like, 
I really need to consider going full time because there's just too much wor workload on, too much organising that needs to happen from me for me to still have a full time job. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, I then went part time and I thought I'll balance it part time for as long as I can. But then even more wholesale work came on and part time lasted about four months and we had to take the plunge. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of stress, a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety around that time because it all happened very quickly. Um, not just that, but um, I don't know if you know, but my mum works for me full time now. At the time, my mum still had a full time job. So mum went full time, I went full time, all in the space of about a month. So there was a lot of people depending on this. Uh, so yeah, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, but it, it worked and it, it keeps on working. So. <laughs> I cross my fingers every day and uh, yeah we just keep having fun with it you know i just think do what you do what you do best and and put all the passion you have into it and it seems to work yeah so 100 percent, yeah absolutely and that's why that's what kind of stuck out stuck out stuck out for me um and why i contacted yourself in the first place mm. is because it's clear that you enjoy what you do and yeah yeah and also you engage with people as well you know it's almost like part of part, people are not just buying the leather bag because they like the leather bag they're buying the leather bag that you made yeah it's really important and, and, and your family made you know and your yeah. mum and, and knowing that the, uh, the different people are involved i yeah. think it's place place Ma massively fun. important and i i tried to implement that mentality into the the other side of the business which is the wholesale um obviously the with with journeyman it's very much one-to-one -one with the customer when you when you're doing an order but with the wholesale i really wanted to implement that and I've had really good feedback from the wholesale customers, you know, when they when we make a prototype for them and I send them a really detailed, honest video about what's going on, what's going well, what's going bad. Um, I've had really good feedback from them and they enjoy the passion that goes into it and they enjoy the honesty behind it. And I think it just makes for really good working relationships. Yeah. Excellent. So when you first started, was it all um, custom commissions or and, and, and is that what you always wanted it to be or did you want it to always be you know somewhat wholesale because understandably the, that brings in a good chunk of money and you know that's coming mm -hmm, in and mm -hmm. then the odd custom thing here that might earn more money but it's a, a rare occurrence. Yeah. The wholesale was never a plan. I never thought that would even happen. When I was doing the leather work it was mostly custom stuff. Um, because I wasn't big enough to warrant making stuff in in a batch. As we moved to the canvas work, it was it was pretty much custom for a while, um, and it was really our first. It was our first show. Our first show we went to warranted us making a batch of stuff, and that was what really got us to a point where we were like, "Wow, we've actually got stock, and we can say that we've got three of these, and they'll sell or they won't sell." Um, and that was the real the big thing that that kind of made us start holding stock um what was the question so and then as that's grown uh, has has that always been a plan you know having is there a certain way that you want to go is it that you want yeah. to ideally do custom stuff or you want to do so um you know have lots of stock or both yeah so having stocks brilliant i absolutely love it i still haven't quite conquered that one yet i'd love to get to a point where we have plenty of everything all the time because I really enjoy making things in batches um, it's quite therapeutic and it's more time effective, etc. Um, so we're still working on that, but we, we hold stock for most of stuff nowadays. Um, but then the wholesale stuff just happened. People came to me and then it's like anything in life. Once one person comes, somebody else comes and it just starts to snowball. Um, but the wholesale, when that happened, like you say, big orders, it's very, um, what's the word I'm after? You know you can pay the bills when those kind of orders come in and it gives you a lot of reassurance, that's the word I was after. Reinsurance, reassurance when those big orders come in. Um, and yeah, it's naturally developed into a thing now where I'm like, well, wholesale is just a thing now, so that's just something we're going to carry on doing. And I really enjoy it. So. I also like developing other people's product ranges as well um, and I think that's maybe why one of the reasons they like working with me or with us um, because I don't just make one thing for them, I come back with to them and be like well, what about this, what about that, that could complement this, that could complement that um, and help them develop as well as obviously paying back to me. 
Um, yeah. What's your what's so what's you mentioned about working with other people? What's been one of your favourite kind of collaborations or projects that you've done to date? Whether it be a one-off or something that's ended up then becoming a, uh, you know, a, a, a long-term. Thing. Yeah. Um, so the first big wholesale order we ever got was from a company and they make cast iron radiators, which is a little bit strange. Not strange, but just different. Not bushcraft. Not really. bushcraft at all. Yeah. Um, and when I, whenever I say that to someone, they always give me that look like what? Yeah. Um, and they wanted a tool roll, a very big tool roll for the equipment that's required to fit said radiator. So with every single radiator that goes out, so forth goes a toolkit with it. And this is a constant thing. You imagine a, a big radiator company sells a lot of radiators, so they need a lot of tool rolls. Um, and that was a really fun one to develop. I really enjoyed it. Um, the, the, the owner of the company, Nick, he's a really nice guy. We get on really well. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, with the, with the development of products, we've developed more and more stuff for them that kind of complements the tool roll and it all kind of works in essence with one another. Um, but that was a big order and I thought it was just a one-off order and it turned out to be a monthly thing consistently for whenever they say stop <laughs> and, we just, and we just keep cranking those out. And that's really nice. I enjoy working for the company. I really like the people behind the company. Um, it's a great product and it's consistent. And it, yeah, it, it ticks every single box for me, that one does. Um, and then within the outdoor space, we did a, a big collaboration with um, a big YouTuber called uh, Mike Pullen, TA Outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, that was a really fun one because that was definitely in my remit. Um, and it was something I wanted to do as well. And it just so happened Mike also wanted to do it. So it, it worked really well. Um, and I really enjoyed doing that and I really enjoyed collaborating and then again, we started to develop more products which fitted with the it was a rucksack by the way we we made a rucksack and then we made pouches for the rucksack and we made food bags for the rucksack and it all just developed and we just have a lot of fun with it like you know and then mike goes out and he tests them and he nylon tears them apart and then he comes back to me with the men's and we, we we just make it better and better and better um yeah wicked i will check my questions for the next one um what's it like working with your family um and also, would, are you in? Are you the boss? Does that mean you're? you're <laughs> Don't ask the that boss? question. <laughs> Does that depend if because we're filming? Yeah, it depends like, who's like listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, to be fair, to be fair, um, it's a very we have a very good, honest dynamic, and I truly believe the the way it works is good communication. Um, we've had we've obviously had our ups and downs as everyone does in life, and the essence what we've come down to is if we just communicate really clearly to to each other because there's, there's more, more than just one or two um good communication just makes everything easier um, with family obviously everyone's got an opinion it's not like you are just the boss talking to an employee and they might have a bit of pushback which is natural um, with family everyone's got an opinion and everyone thinks they know how things should go um but Generally speaking, I think there's a lot of honesty there and it, it works really well, to be honest. Um, so Emily, my partner, she does all of the admin, all of the postage, all the website, all of the marketing. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see that Emily does and the company would not be there without her 100%. Um, they only see me here working away making the stuff, but God, yeah, so much that Emily does that just people don't see. Um, Mom is the best seamstress I've got. She just cranks it out all day, doesn't moan, and she does the best quality work. She's a better seamstress than I am. Um, so it's nice to have her there, just absolute consistency, top top draw, five star, just churning it out every single day. And then we've now got uh, local ladies as well working for us. So we've got we've got Sue and we've got Jean, and now Emily's dad's also picking up the mantle and going to give it a go as well. Um, so we've got people outside the family as well, which are coming on board, which is which is really fun. Um, yeah. So what piece of advice would you give to someone who was going through a similar process to yourself? You know, like especially if they're at a, at a point, because um, I know I went through a similar similar thing myself growing yeah. up when I was growing the video production company where we're going from a freelancer 
uh, being so busy and, 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 and earning enough that it's so, like, okay, I could bring on employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was making that decision of do I want to bring in outside people and then having their responsibilities. And the reason I ended up not doing that, however, Miss Alicia came and worked with us instead, mm. was what kept it in the household, but then at the same time meant that uh, I could still go and do the fun stuff yeah, because yeah. I wasn't having to just manage. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Do you st- are you still getting to kind of I suppose you you're still getting to do the kind of creative side of things? At the moment, not so much. Um, I've really currently I'm very much finding myself needing to manage more, uh, which is fine. But I do want to get back to uh, the thing I really love is I love making new stuff. I like working on prototypes. I like making new products, and I like working with the customers and working those relationships. Um, at the moment, I seem to have less and less time for that, um, but we are in the process of taking somebody else on to alleviate me, give me more time, uh, take the pressure off so I can get back to doing that, and then you can push the business further. Um, so, yeah, currently, not it's not sitting exactly where I want it to be, but you have to go through these stages to get to the to the next stage. So, yeah. It's all learning as well, Yeah, isn't it? yeah, massive yeah. learning curve, yeah. I'd also say as well, with the with the family thing, it's if you were to take family on board, it's really important to actually not try and be the boss. Remember that they are family, because I think it'd be I think it would be very easy to try, rub your family up the wrong way if you were trying to play the dictator. There's not you don't need to be like that. Isn't yeah, and I, and and like I said, it's about communication. Yeah, I think something for myself and Alicia that have worked is knowing the the areas where we do. If mm-hmm. it, we're in charge of those areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to learn that as well, yeah. She pretty much straight away took on the accounting and a lot of the admin stuff, mm-hmm. and I just trust her to do yeah. it. Yeah, just have yes, faith, it yeah. it was difficult to get used to because I was when I first was doing it, I was sending out this invoice and quoting with this number, Yeah. and then my end, the money I'd get paid from the company at the end of the month, I'd be like, well, that's not that. That's nowhere near that. Well, yeah, where's yeah. that gone? And then it's just like, well, no, she you knows what she's doing and trusting yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, trusting Alicia with those, with yeah. her roles, basically her job. Absolutely. Um, so that when it inevitably, if it does come down to something where someone's got to make a decision, the person who's in charge of it, everyone else trusts that. That's their. If they make the wrong, you know, if the decision ends up being it's on them, not yeah, a great yeah. one, then that's okay because yeah. that was their role. Yeah, they, not... ma- they made that choice, and that's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So what are the ways, I'm just thinking about now, so just some areas that can might help people who are doing something similar. Like what ways do you advertise? How do you, how have you grown the business, you know, and put yourself out there? Mm-hmm. Um, as a startup, it's, so there's, there's a big, in my mind, there's a big difference between being a startup and having a, a, um, a physical retail store where people will naturally find you and there's a startup being online. We were a startup online, and that's really difficult because you've got to put so much effort into um, social media and putting that content online every single day. Um, that in itself is nearly a full-time job. It's a, a massive hustle that you've just got. To, you can't ever get off the horse. Um, and I learned that very early on because I used to have a YouTube channel, so I was very used to consistently putting up content, and I just implemented that into the business. Um, so if you're a startup with an online shop, you need to put the effort into the into the, to the social media. Without it, it'll be a very long road. Um, putting yourself out there physically at shows and stuff is a massive help, and it does take you to that next level. But to begin with. I imagine funds are probably tight and you can't get to these type of shows. You've just got to hustle that online space really hard. Excellent. Did you do any like freebies and things? Or things like what we're doing right now? No money is exchanging hands. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm doing some, I'll do some photography and video for yourself in return yeah. for. Bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Favour for a favour. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I did, I did say when we first, the first thing I said when I uh, when we when I spoke to you on the phone was I would happily have every single one. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. So where, where do you where do you <laughs> draw the line? So how do I say? Where can I have all of them? That's the thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, over the years, we've done multiple collaborations with Instagrammers, YouTubers, giveaways or giveaways through other people. Um, 
as a startup, you just need to get in front of as many people's eyes as physically possible. So the one thing you do have is you have your own two hands and you have your time. So you can put that into something and create something that they can then be given away in, in um, what's the word I'm after? It will come back to Yeah. You. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, exactly. That, and also the time and effort putting yourself out there, you'll then gain those people who, like, like, yeah. like I said, kind of get to know you and your product. And then in time, they're the people that come back and yeah. keep getting orders. Yeah, and collaboration is a wonderful thing. And it's, it's yeah. nice to be able to, not just favour for a favour either, it's nice to be able to connect with individuals like yourself and actually get to know people and, mm. and, and get to the bones of what you actually do and what you're passionate about. Yeah. It's, it's, just share I, your passions. Yeah. And I enjoy that, yeah. That, yeah, you're both up for, you're both interested yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And just, just have fun with it. That's, that's the main thing, yeah. That's what I'm hoping from our, our project then. <laughs> yeah, is, absolutely. Uh, so I had an idea. I was, I was thinking whether you're going to be like, oh, no, I'd rather just do like the pack and it, you know, yeah, yeah. it might have a different type of strap. But uh, yeah, yeah. Else. now I'm thinking, oh, should I push you? Even no, more? like. Should I think of, OK, well, actually, I, I want it kind of like a transformer. I want it to be this big. Yeah, yeah. I want and it to then... come with a pack that's this big <laughs> and has 50 different add-ons, but it needs to be lighter than, you know, one kilogram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I said to you, literally anything's possible. It's just, it's it's the time essence. It's like, how long is yeah. this going to take? Um, and I'm up for taking as long as it needs to be. It's just fitting it in around everything else. Yeah. I love a challenge and I love... I love doing new stuff. It's like I said, I love making new products and developing new prototypes. So I'm, I'm all up for trying anything. I love it when someone gives me something and goes, can you remake this or something similar? Um, and I'm like, I'm looking at it thinking, I haven't got a clue, but I'm going, yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> it's pretty much my life. <laughs> Excellent. And that's 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 how you say how it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what um, I'll put an interview above interviewing Nigel Armitage, yeah, yeah, who yeah. is nearby. Yeah. He, he, that he said that it was pretty much the same, that when he was started, it was like people would come to him and say, can you make this? And it's like, well, I know how to make those that, bits. Yes. I've never put them all together before. How hard can it be? Yeah, exactly. And also, like you say, if you don't challenge yourself, you don't attempt those things, yeah. then you're always going to say no. You'll never grow. Do. Yeah, you'll yeah. never grow. Um, okay, I think we're pretty much done. Um <clears throat> I would say, what's your favourite thing? But I think you've answered that by saying, you know, the challenge and, and working for yourself. Is there is there maybe a specific moment or something for yourself that's just like, you know, just sticks out as one of your favourite things about what you do? One of the, one of the most enjoyable things about working for myself, but also working within the space that I work in, which is the outdoor space, is is getting to know other people that also work in the space on an intimate level, like Jamie and Steve, and just being able to talk to them on nearly a daily basis and get to know them and get down to the bones of what they do. And I think I've mentioned it previously, but I just like to get to know people and and you develop like a, a bond as well in the team and you, you, you help each other out and it's, it is a massive community and I love that about the space that I work in. Um, I'm not sure you'd get that necessarily everywhere. But yeah, that's the most enjoyable thing I think. That's quite, I think that's quite poignant actually because I think I agree with that. I've, I'm, I'm one that I've, I've always thought, I've never had a like a nine to five job mm. in an office. I've worked as a waiter and things. But one thing that sometimes I feel that I don't get and I feel that you miss is is the sense of community when you yeah, run your yeah. own business and do your own thing. And yeah. that's a big push for me to do this, is just to literally, as Alicia would put it, I'm thirsty for friends. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I just want to go out and meet people yeah, yeah. who share interests or whatever. And inevitably, you know, you might know a bit more about one thing and they know a bit more about something else. And then you just by yeah. sharing and just doing something together, yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. Like a project we've mentioned with Jamie, which it's like, oh yes, hundred percent, and one up for that, is um, like doing like a photography holiday. Mm. So in essence, maybe it's Jamie and maybe yourself and uh, different people all go away mm -hmm. and they all have the stuff they want to do for their own business, but they end up with I think it's actually something that I think Mike Pullen has literally just done. They did like a canoe trip. Oh, yeah, with yeah. Like eight different YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. Basically like that, you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. go go to somewhere, but photographers as well as bushcrafters and whatever. Yeah, go, yeah, yeah. And then they just basically have holiday, but actually yeah. they get a load of content while they're there. Yeah, but you're also working, like, working yeah. holiday. I think the thing about humans is we like to share. 
We mm. love to share our experiences. Um, and generally speaking, a lot of that is just your day-to-day chitter chatter that you would have at the pub. Um, what I really enjoy is getting to know people and really, really getting deep about what they do and what they enjoy and what they don't enjoy. And, and then help each other out with the things you struggle with and just having that camaraderie and, and back and forth and, and stuff. Yeah, just going deeper than you would normally do with people. Um, the community is very open to that and really very honest. And I really enjoy that about it. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so if someone was looking um, to either get some something from yourselves mm. or maybe even have, have a custom um, bag or product made, yeah, yeah. where should they go? Uh, so our Instagram is Journeyman Handcrafts. Considering turning it into Journeyman soon, so that might happen. Just drop the handcrafts on, don't I? I don't know. Um, well, I don't know. When Facebook dropped, dropped yeah, the the. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. So it could be the same. It's a big deal. Um, and our website is uh, Journeyman Handcrafts. Uh, is it Journeyman Handcrafts? Yeah, journeymanhandcrafts.co.uk. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm hoping to start a YouTube channel soon, but... We'll see how that goes. I've been saying that. So before. you do got your own. You you you've got your own one, but are you not doing that as much anymore? That's very much. A, like, don't really do it at all anymore. Um, still record when we go on our, our our big adventures. Still record, but just never seem to find the time to edit them. Um, so it's still there. At some point, I'll find the time to to edit those videos and put them online. Um, but I want to start one dedicated to the business. I think it'd be a really fun thing to do. Um, but yeah, it's fun the time to. I can record them no problem. It's fun the time to edit them for me. Is, is, is the more of an issue I think. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I happen to know someone who can edit, yeah. and if you if you need someone to edit for you, that could be that could be a good thing going on. There. Um. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'll put all the links uh, down below. Um. For yourself and for people to. Yeah. Hit brilliant. Up if they want to. So yeah. Thanks very much. No for, problem. Uh, chatting with us today. This was one of the first things we've done. So now I'm looking forward to. The rest of the questions yes. we've got, and actually, hopefully, it being a little bit cooler as well as the week yeah, goes on. Yeah, we're going cool off outside. <laughs> All right then. No worries. Yeah. Thanks for coming. No worries.